Welcome to Von Lintel Gallery. This is my first solo show here, a show called Kinematic Exposures, which might make you ask, so what is that? What is a kinematic exposure? Well, it's just a term I came up with to describe exposures I'm making while moving about with my camera. In this case, they're kinematic pinhole exposures, which are exposures I make with a pinhole instead of a lens-based camera while moving. All of the images that you see here were made in Antarctica early this year on a trip I took there with my dad. When I pre-visualized the kind of images I might want to make when I got there, I realized we've all seen plenty of images of icebergs. One of the techniques I often use to address the problem of there being so many images already out in the world is to think, what's the least practical, the least logical way to approach a given subject. In this case, if you're going to be shooting from a Zodiac boat, you want a fast camera, something modern, with a long lens to bring in the action and to freeze what you're seeing. Well, I went the exact opposite direction. The pinhole lens is a wide angle lens and it requires a long exposure. The reason pinholes tend to require a long exposure is, well, they just have a tiny little aperture. So it takes a long time to gather enough light to make a full exposure. And that brings a whole element of time to the images that I capture as well as a little bit of happenstance, a sense of chance. So by introducing those two elements, I'm able to achieve images that look different from the majority that you'll be seeing. What interests me particularly about pinhole exposures is that I use them to develop what I call a modern pictorialism. So a type of photography that's much more interested in the way things feel, the experience, the emotional reaction we might have to a place, rather than just documenting exactly what it looks like. And this refers back to earlier work, particularly early 20th century pictorialists like photographer Ann Brigman, who went all around the Eastern Sierra making these spiritual investigations of natural phenomena. What you see here is the first exhibition of this body of work. Next year, I'm going to be doing a three-week residency program in the Arctic Circle with a bunch of artists and scientists, and I will be making more images to explain later. The future show will also include what I believe are the first pinhole exposures of whales, certainly the first ones of living whales in Antarctica. Of course, any image of Antarctica brings to mind a cautionary message about climate change. This is a beautiful continent facing a number of environmental challenges. We all know the icebergs are melting. But what I'd like to bring to your attention today is the fact that the entire ecosystem down there is based on a crustacean called krill. What you may not know is that a lot of the omega-3 supplements people are taking are also primarily made of krill. Now, pretty much all the life forms down there, from penguins to whales, rely on this krill for their survival, and you probably didn't know that. So my message for you today is, if you're gonna take omega-3, make sure you're not destroying Antarctica. Don't kill the krill. There are plenty of plant-based versions of the omega-3 that don't require harvesting all the krill. Much of the time it was overcast, and that's why very often when you see photographs of Antarctica, they have this sort of gray tone sense about them. This particular one is called Shifting Seas, but another thing that happened while I was there is that the sun almost never sets. In fact, it's like this permanent sunset situation. So the purple image that we saw at the beginning is called Maximum Twilight, and that was a lot of the experience I had was this sort of purplish, dusk kind of light that would last for hours every night. And then the sunset would, would happen and the sun would set for what seemed like hours, which was in fact hours because of the way that the light sort of is coming at an angle almost all day. This is a series called The Persistence of Being and these are the only images that were not made in Antarctica. In fact, I captured this particular image in 2010 at the Museum of Contemporary Art in Los Angeles. The subject of this series are a couple of life-size Giacometti sculptures at the museum. 
So these images are also kinematic exposures, so they're long exposures made with a pinhole lens while I'm moving about. And my concern here isn't as much to reproduce what these Giacometti sculptures, these life-size sculptures actually look like, but more what my impression was, like to create like an evocative emotional reaction to them. And each one of the colors, I think, sort of brings a different feeling to each one. So what I'm doing with this series is I'm making three different sizes, one version of each, and then that's it. So the paper is a product made by Hannah Mule, and it's called Photorag Metallic. And the nature of it is basically you're printing on a mirror like paper or something like aluminum foil. And when you move about, the images themselves come to life. So one of the things about Von Lintel Gallery is its commitment to show work that needs to be seen in real life. And this is a good example. I think it's really hard to get a sense of what it really looks like without being there. But I think you can see that when you look at it at different angles, it catches a light and looks very different. 